this is a anti-desk stretch club class where we'll be focusing more on the hips and the spine going through a bunch of different movements just to again lubricate the joints and get certain muscles activated and working again so all you're going to need in terms of equipment is your yoga mat and that is pretty much it so we're going to start lying down on our backs and i'll see you there Lay down on our backs, we're just going to start with a little bit of shaking just to loosen up and encourage the nervous system to relax a little bit. So, lifting the hands straight above your shoulders, lifting the feet straight above your hips and just start to gently shake everything from the fingers, toes, down to the ankles, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, the knees, the hips, everything, just giving it all a little bit of a good shake out. But it's quite nice as well because we're allowing the lymph system to drain, excess build of the blood to go back to our vital organs. And then just relax, bring the hands back down to your side, plant those feet back down onto the floor, about hip distance apart. Keep the hands by your side, just take a nice deep inhale with me. Exhaling out of your mouth. And do this a couple more times, nice and slow. Inhale, calm, controlled exhale. Good, two more times. Just to again try to encourage the nervous system more to the parasympathetic, more rest and recover. And then just coming back to normal breathing. So we're going to start with some super simple movements into the hips for internal or external rotation. Coming to windscreen wipers. So feet about hip distance apart. We're just going to start by slowly knocking the knees down towards the right side. Back, we just center them down to the left side. Just about to where you take your hands. You can maybe take them onto your belly or directly above your head. Depends whatever feels best for you. Whatever feels more comfortable. But again, nice and slow and controlled with the movement into our hips. Allowing the pelvis to lift as we drop the knees down to either side. Good. So we're just going to go one more time each direction. Again, keeping that breath controlled and regulated. And then coming back through to centre, hugging both of your knees into your chest. So a chance to sync up the breathing a little bit more with our movements. So inhale, try to draw the knees in as close as possible. Exhale, push the knees away from the chest. So again, inhale to draw it in. Exhale, drawing away. Inhale in. Exhaling away. One more time. Lovely. This time, as you draw the knees in, keep hugging the right knee and you're going to extend the left leg away from you. But keep the leg hovering about an inch or so off the ground. So bracing through the core, protecting the spine. And then slowly swap the legs over, hug the left knee in, extend the right leg away, hovering off the ground to engage the quads. Release and switch onto the right side one more time. And then we're going to start doing it without the hands. So we start to awaken the hip flexors, one of the deepest core muscles, a little bit more. So this time, hands by your side, draw the right knee in, keep squeezing as close as you can. And then swapping over the left side. Okay, we're going to do it one more time each side. So again, hugging in nice and tight. And then last time to the left. Good. And then let both legs go down straight. Reach the arms, bow your head and just roll through the wrist, roll through the ankles. So hopefully you're starting to feel a little bit of an awakening into the hip flexors. We're going to stimulate that area of the body a little bit more. Because prolonged sitting throughout the day can really weaken or shorten the range of our hip flexors, which are one of our strongest and deepest abdominals. So we're just trying to, again, bring some awareness back to them, start to work and build up the strength in them again. So, lying flat on your back, 
bracing your core doesn't necessarily mean pushing your back flat to the ground but bracing so we have stability to the pelvis and the spine from here hands are going to go by your side and you're just going to lift the right leg straight up into the air so the leg comes above or the foot comes above the hip and then slowly lower it back down towards the ground again hovering about an inch off the floor you're going to do this like six times in total so inhale to lift Exhale, slowly, slowly back down. Four more times, inhale, lifting. Exhale, down. As you do this, try to press the left heel to the floor so you activate through the hamstrings. And nice and slow when you let the right heel come back down to the ground. The negatives of the movements allow more strengthening. Lovely, one more time. Good, hover, then release, relax. Left side, drive the right heel to the ground, inhale, lift the left leg, again, bracing through the core. Exhale, slowly down. Inhale to lift. Exhale, down. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, down. So three more times. Hopefully you're feeling that core again activate and work. You feel the hip flexors as well. Driving down through the right heel last time. Good, release, relax. Reach up through the hands, roll through the wrist, roll through the ankles. Lovely. So next bit, we're gonna come into some glute bridges just to sort of stimulate and awaken again the hamstring muscles, ones that again can become particularly weak with prolonged sitting. Basically, the whole posterior chain we're going to look at today. So, feet are planted about hip distance apart on the ground, hands are going to go by your side. We kind of want to have the knees over the heels, so we have a little bit more stability when we do come to lift up. So we're going to come through some pulses to start with, just to move again in line with our breath, see how we're feeling in the pose, and then we're going to come to some holds. So grounding down through the big toe, the heels, inhale to lift. Squeezing the glutes, bracing through the core, using the adductors, the abductors, the muscles in the inner outer thigh, and then exhale to calm down. Inhale to squeeze and lift. Exhale to lower. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, lowering. Good, keep driving through the heels, through the toes. Two more pulses and we'll come to a hold. Good, last one, inhale, lift. Exhale, down. This time we're gonna lift and hold it. Good, so as you come up, find yourself in whatever range you feel comfortable with. You don't have to be super high up, as long as we feel grounded in the heels and the toes. Engaging through the glutes. Now imagine you're holding a beach ball in between your knees. You don't want to hold it too tightly that it pops, but also too loosely that it floats away. So from that, we understand activation to our adductors and abductors. Glutes are obviously switched on, but to have more control over our internal rotation for our hips, we have to think about driving our heels back towards our body. So driving them to feel the belly of the hamstrings switching on. Breathing here, everything is probably burning because mine is. Lots of muscles stimulating, activating. Okay, we're going to take one more breath here. And slowly release, slowly relax, coming all the way down. Lovely. Cool, so from here. So from here, we're now going to come up into some seated poses. So you can take hold of the tops of the knees or underneath and start to rock yourself up and down two or three times, using a little bit of momentum. Last one. Cool. So bringing yourself upright, you're going to take your feet out in front of you, again about hip distance apart, and hands are going to be behind. Doesn't matter if fingertips are facing forwards, to the side or behind, whatever feels more comfortable. From here, we are coming into a seated figure four. So 
take the left ankle, cross it above the right knee, and find yourself sitting comfortably for a sec. Good, so we're engaging, we're thinking about driving that left knee away from us. Now I want you to push through the right foot and the hands and lift the bum about an inch off the floor. From here we start to drive the bum down to the heels, and we can go back, we can twist, we can turn. Basically just a little bit of movement. So we find again movement to the ankle, the knee, the hips, the pelvis, and the left leg for internal rotation for the left hip. Cool. Now from here, we drop the bum back down and we rotate towards the right hand side so the leg and the foot comes down to the right. Now we find ourselves in a seated position. From here, you have a couple of options. You can start to twist and rotate down towards the right side, go as low as you want. You can come back to the middle and maybe fold forwards a little bit. Or you can come into a twist where you twist towards the left hand side. Get anything, invite a little bit of movement in, or just be still, whatever you would like. Cool. And then slowly we rotate all the way back to the middle, release that leg, swap them over. So right ankle crosses first, push through the feet and the hands, lifting up, start to move, start to pulse, backwards and forwards, side to side, creating some twists, whatever it likes to do. Cool. Again, when you're ready, drop the bum down, this time dropping both foot and knee towards the left hand side, maybe twist down to the left, through centre, through to the right, whatever it is. Again, respond to what this side needs, not just because you did it on the previous side. And then when you are ready, hands behind, come all the way back through to centre, release the feet in front. We're going to transition onto our hands and knees, coming into a tabletop. So we're going to have a look at some spinal articulations, just developing more control over the different segments of our spine as we go through flexion and extension. So we're going to start in an extended position. So squeezing shoulder blades together, allow the belly button to drop towards the ground, looking forwards, extending out of the chest. Cool. Now to come into more of a flex position, we're going to start to move from the sacrum, from the coccyx, and slowly wave our way up the spine, through lumbar, through thoracic, through cervical. So you're going to start by drawing in and tucking the tailbone first, slowly articulating up through the lumbar, pushing through the hands, through the chest, eventually tucking the chin in. And we're going to reverse in the same way. Start by moving from the tailbone, the sacrum, the lumbar spine, the thoracic spine, the cervical as we move into extension. And we're just learning to develop more control over each segment of the spine, of the vertebrae. So we can pinpoint movement, we can understand perhaps restrictions and certain tensions in certain areas and just generally start to understand our body a little bit more. I would say it's quite worth recording yourself doing this because when you first start to do spinal articulations it can be quite challenging fully understanding and mapping out what that body, what that spine is doing. And recording just gives you a visual representation of what is going on. Cool. So let's go for one more wave. We could do this all day. <laughs> and slowly, slowly coming back into a nice neutral tabletop position. Lovely. So from here we're going to have a little look at some isolated rotations for our hips. So pushing into those hands. If you obviously need to like shake them out, flick out through the wrists, go for it. But from here, we're going to start by lifting the right leg off the ground. So lift the knee, lift the toes. Push through the hands, push through the leg. And you're going to draw that knee as close as you can towards the right wrist without sort of tucking in and flexing in the spine. And then back. And again, draw in and away. Nice and small movements controlled. In and out. Last time, draw in. And draw back out. Release. We'll come to the left side. So lift the left knee, the left foot. Draw into the left wrist. 
and away. Breathe in, control, out. Push through the hands. Lovely, one more time. Good. So even though it feels like a super simple movement, it's just testing our range for our hips and also just working those hip flexors a little bit more, as well as teaching you some pelvic stability. This time we are going to look at some abduction, so drawing the leg away from us. So push through the hands again, lift the right knee off the floor. This time you're going to start to open up that leg towards the right hand side, only as much as you can. You don't want to twist and rotate through the pelvis, you want to keep it level. Draw it back down. So four times in total, out, squeeze the glutes, back down, out, and down. Last time, and down. Good, release, onto the left side. Push through the hands, push through the right leg, abduct towards the left, and slowly down. If you really wanted to be mindful of your pelvis, place a book onto your sacrum, onto your low back, and see that it stays in place as you do this. One more time. Good, and releasing. So this time we're gonna have a look at some internal rotation for our hips. Super important and movement to do, and we very rarely do it in our daily lives. So we need to make sure that we still have it, otherwise we will lose it. So, push through the hands again. Lifting the right knee off the floor, again, come into abduction. And then this time, you drop the knee towards the ground, you think about drawing the foot forwards. And then back to our start. And again, drop the knee, foot comes forwards. Return. Two more times. Knee down, foot forwards, squeeze the glutes. Back, last one. Good, releasing. Left side, push through, abduct the left leg away. Again, remember, Stability into the pelvis. Knee drops, foot forwards for one. Try to find a balance into the hands. Two. Good. Knee drop, foot forwards for three. Last one, remember the breath. And releasing. Lovely. So the last one we're going to look at is some extension. So for this, making sure we really keep that core control, that core awareness. From here, lastly, push through those hands. You're going to take that right leg straight behind you. So the knee is in line with the hip, the foot is facing up. Now squeeze the glutes, just lift the knee a little bit. You're not coming down to extension in the lumbar spine. We are keeping it in neutral and then draw it back down to alignment. Again, push and lift, slowly down. Two more times. And again, up. And then down. Lovely. Release. Last time to the left. So lift the knee in line with the hip. Squeeze the glutes. Elevate. And then down. Squeeze. And down. Two more times. Last one. Good. And release. Sit back down. Do your heels for a second. And just roll through the wrist. Give them a little bit of love. So even though I know that does sometimes feel a little bit boring, sometimes the boring work is the foundations and we need it in order to stay healthy into our joints. So now coming into a gate position, so back to tabletop, this time you're going to extend your right leg out to the side. So kick it out to the side, try to have the arch of the foot in line with the left knee. You might need to shuffle around a little bit. Hands are going to come out in front. We're just going to start by pulsing backwards and forwards a little bit. So again, as you pulse back and forwards, feel free to lift up the toes and rock back. Whatever feels good. You might feel an opening into the inside muscles on the thigh. Good. And then slowly coming all the way back through to center. Adding in some rotation, so a little bit of movement for the spine, particularly the thoracic spine. You're going to push through the right hand. You're going to take that left hand towards the lower back, fingertips facing down the body. And already you'll be able to tell if your pelvis is twisted or not. So you want to have again a level pelvis hip. So inhale, look towards the ground. Exhale, you're going to rotate towards the left hand side without twisting from the pelvis. Exhale, come back down. Inhale to twist. Exhaling down. Inhale, twist. Exhale down. Last time, inhale, opening. 
exhale down return that hand swap the legs over so left leg extends out to the side again find stability then start to rock backwards and forwards left side for me is definitely tighter so you might notice some differences again feel free to peel back the toes if you would like as well cool and when you're ready coming forwards again pushing through the left hand right hand to your lower back check out and see if you've got stability there bracing through the core pushing through the knee the foot inhale exhale twist and rotate to the right good exhale down inhale open exhaling down inhale push and rotate exhaling down last time inhale and exhale down lovely plant those hands bring yourself back into a tabletop position and just have a little wriggle around a little shake a little move through the spine through the knees the hips the hands and we're going to come into a low lunge position so back to stillness you're going to step your right foot forwards ground down through the leg and bring yourself up into a low lunge now for now we're going to have those hips relatively square engaging into the glutes hands stay on the hips inhale here then exhale bend into the front knee as much as you're comfortable with whilst trying to keep the spine nice and upright into neutral we're not collapsing forwards cool push up back through center inhale exhale down inhale center exhale down inhale center exhale down last time inhale exhale now stay there squeezing the glutes two options either extend the hands up and above the head and start to lift from the chest slowly looking upwards or take the hands towards the low back squeeze those shoulder blades together and slowly encourage the extension out through the chest into the throat obviously as you do this ground down strong through the legs engagement into the glutes bracing through the core so we have more stability one more breath here slowly bring the chin back to the chest return it to normal push back up into low lunge then plant both hands to the inside of the right leg for this we're going to tuck and lift the back knee shuffle it back a little bit and then replant that foot down to the ground coming into quite a nice quad stretch you're going to start to drive the back heel towards your glutes as much as you can. Foot can be flexed, it can be relaxed, or it can be pointed. But drive it in as much as you can where you feel that lovely sort of release coming to the front of your quad. Obviously breathing through the movement, the longer, more controlled the exhales are, the easier the brain has of sort of relaxing. Telling the body it's safe. Good, one more breath. And then release and relax the leg. Come back into tabletop and then we'll swap sides over. So left leg steps forwards, coming up into our low lunge position. So again, hands to the hips, squeezing the glutes, inhale. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, up. Exhaling down. Good, a couple more times. Squeeze in the glutes. Try to make sure the knee stays facing forwards, it doesn't collapse in or out. Last time. Good, slowly, slowly return all the way back up. And then again, just re-bend, come back to that nice loaded position. Hands either straight up and above as you lift and extend through the chest or take hands to the low back, squeeze shoulder blades together and then slowly find yourself lifting up into extension. Engaging the glutes, bracing through the core, breathing nice and easy. Good, one more breath here. Chin comes back to the chest, pushing all the way back up. Plant the hands to the inside of the left leg, tuck and lift that knee. Give it a little bit of space and then plant it back down to the floor. Push through the hands, slowly drive that right heel in 
towards the glutes as much as you want to go. Car alarm going off, lovely. <laughs> so again, flex foot, relax foot, whatever it is. Good, we're going to go for one more breath here. And then slowly release, slowly relax. Push yourself back into tabletop and have a little bit of a wiggle out. Cool. So if you got to the point where you almost had a hamstring cramp as well in the quad movement, it's absolutely fine. That usually is the case as well. So our final movement, we're going to sit on our bum, bring our legs round to the front, and we're going to plant them in about hip distance apart. Take hold of those knees. And from here, you're slowly going to lean away, arms go straight, ribcage falls to the hips, you drop the chin to your chest. When you inhale, pull yourself through, extend out the spine, squeeze shoulder blades so you're looking up. Bring an exhale. Inhale forwards. You do this at your own pace as many times as you like. You can kind of twist and turn side to side between those two movements. Whatever feels good. But whenever I work at a desk for a long period of time, I really enjoy extension movements for the spine, just because I usually sit quite hunched. <laughs> Good. And then slow it all the way down. Bring yourself into a kneeling position or a comfortable seat, whatever it is. And there we have it. So I hope you enjoy this little movement fix and it's got you feeling good and loose in the joints and the muscles, nice and activated. But yeah, if you had any comments, questions, suggestions for future videos, let me know and I will see you next time.